I'm gonna do a recap. Come back, come back, come back. My brother right here. Are you married? You're not married yet. Okay, my sister, are you married? You're not married. Do you want to be married one day? My brother, do you want to be married one day? Eventually, yes. Okay, all praises. That's how we build a nation. Marriages are honorable. We need marriages to grow, to build a nation, to bring up the righteous so we can take over the earth. We need that, all right? Read what you got. Verse 1. Verse 1. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Right, so we follow Christ as Christ followed his father, right? Come on. Verse 2. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So in that marriage, and the captain was just bringing this out, is a man and a woman equal in marriage? Tamika. She says yes. No. A man and a woman is not equal. All right? My brother right here. Is a man and a woman, when you get married, is your wife going to be equal to you? No. You say no. My sister right here. Come close, come close, come close. We're not going to bite you. All right? We talk about marriage. Are you married? One day you would like to be married, yes? Okay. When you get married, will you be equal to your husband? She says no. Okay, very good. We're going to read what the Bible says. All right, read what you got. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Tamika, who is the head of man? We just read God. it. We just read it. God. Read it again. Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is who? Is Christ. Who's the head of every man? Christ, right? Very good. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. My sister right here, who is the head of the woman? The man. Did you hear that to me? So, I'm going to ask you again. When you get married, is there going to be equality within that marriage? If it's an honorable marriage according to the Bible. No, it's not. Why? Because the Bible just said that. Read it again. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Come on. And the head of Christ. Even Christ has a head, right? Who's the head of Christ? God, who's the head of Christ? Right, who's the head of Christ? He's talking, go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is God. So this is very important for you sisters who are single looking to get married one day. You must know that. If you don't, there will be what in the marriage? There will be what in the marriage if you don't, if you don't keep hold of what we just learned from what Paul taught us that Christ taught him. There will be disorder. There will be what? Turmoil. Turmoil, right? You said something real heavy when the captain was teaching you. You said if if, uh, if there's disorder in the marriage, what's going to happen to the children? If the parents ain't right, what's going what's going to happen to the children? Are they going to if the if the if the parents are doing evil things? The kids are going to do evil things, right? Go back to Titus where we were, because we're talking about the marriage. We need strong marriages within the nation of Israel. That's what we need. Right, kids do what? They pick up, that's what you said. Kids pick up everything, right? I want Titus chapter 2. The book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 4. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands. Now women today, are they teaching their children how to love their husbands? Why? Because most of them don't have a husband. But do they have children? Do they have, it's verse 9, all praise. Do they have children? They do have children. So what are they teaching their children? What are a woman teaching their children to do? To be single, right? What else? Make it colorful so I can see it real clear. What else are a woman teaching their children to do? To be busy bodies doing what? I'm going to give you an example in the scriptures, all right? Read what you got. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 9. Come on. Exhort servants to be obedient unto their own masters. Right, so we're called to be obedient, right? The head of man is who? Christ. Who's the head of the woman? The man, come on. And to please them well in all things. Now, a woman today, are they seeking to please their husbands well in all things? Is that how you describe the black woman today? She's seeking to please her husband in all things? Is that how we see the black woman today? Is that how she's described? Is that how the other nations see the black woman? No. Come on. And to please them well in all things, not answering again. Wait, not doing what? Not answering again. What's that mean? Not answering again. Yeah, what's that mean? 
not answering again, right? Think about it. Read it again from the top. Verse 9. I interrupted him, right? We're going to read it all the way through. Come on. The book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 9. Read. Exhort servants to, 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 to be obedient unto their own masters. Be obedient. That's what the Bible says. Come on. And to please them well in all things. Seek to please your husband well in all things, right? Come on. Not answering again. Not what? Not answering again. What's it mean to answer, for a sister to answer again to her husband, who she's supposed to be obedient to in all things? What is it called? What is it called? Back talk. That's what that's called. Do our sisters do that today? Yes, they do. Where does that start? As a child to who? To who? To a single who? Or who else? If he's there. To a father. To a father. So, like you said, a child's going to pick up everything. One of those things that that child picks up is how to be what? Disrespectful to their parents. Because they learned it usually from who? Their mother being disrespectful to their husband or to their to they baby daddy. You understand? They learned that. So now it's hard for you to do what? It's hard for you to do what now? Give me Isaiah chapter 3. Your, it's hard to try to keep, teach your kids respect. Right, because what are they going to do? What are they going to show you? They going to show you what they learned from who? Their father. From no, the, from the from, mama. From the mother. Yes. Right, and how she dealt with who? Their father. Right, that's what she's going to learn. Isaiah chapter 3. This Bible is a black man's book. You understand? Everything we read about in here is addressing our community. But we reject this book. And that's why you see what you see today. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 12. Yo. As for my people, children are their oppressors. What does the Bible say? Verse 12, as for my people, children are their oppressors. God says, in the black community, the children oppress the adults. Is that going on in Obla? Obla. Is children oppressing the adults out here? How so? Being disrespectful. How else? They following multitudes to do evil. Are they selling drugs out here in Chicago? Are they murdering people in Chicago? Huh? Are the, are the woman, let's talk about the woman for a minute. Is the woman killing her babies in Chicago? Yes. Yes. Come on. Verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors. And those babies that make it, you understand the ones that the mama don't kill, she probably done ran the daddy away, right? So that child is being raised in a single parent household, right? By a mother who probably taught that child how to be disrespectful, how to talk back. You understand? How not to shut up, how not to be silent. You understand? A, a, a little girl should learn, like we read in Titus, the captain was bringing it out, how to love her husband. How is the little girl going to learn that if her, her if her if her mother isn't showing that to her father? Bring it out. If the if the woman don't get married and instead says, "I think I'm gonna get me a boyfriend," how is she gonna have opportunity to teach that child not to do the same exact thing? Bring it it out. won't happen. You understand? It will not happen, right? So you say you want to get married. You say you want to get married, right? Are you ready to be married? You say yes. What's your name, sis? Jasmine and Tamika, right? Jasmine, are you ready to be married? You're preparing yourself. So, I'm going to ask you again. Are you ready to be married? Not yet. Okay, Tamika's ready, so I'm going to deal with you. All right, Tamika? Now, you, you learned many things today. What's required? What have I been looking for in a woman? Marriage material. What is a man looking for? in a woman to marry, to death do you part? What type of things you think you should be able to bring to the table? Make it plain for me. Huh? Very good, being submissive. We went over that today. What else? I'm looking for four things, all right? And they all start with an S, I'm gonna make it easy for you, all right? So tell me, tell me three more things, submission. Captain brought that out earlier today. Give me something else. Silence. Very good. I don't even think he was here when the captain was bringing it out. Give me that answer to the 26 verse 13. Because Tamika, we want you to be 
a gift from the Lord. Yes. You understand? Right. That's what we want you to be. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 26 and verse 13. Come on. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband. What does the Bible say? The grace of a wife delighteth her husband. Come on. And her discretion will fatten his bone. Read. Verse 14. A silent and loving woman. What does the Bible say? A silent and loving woman. What type of woman is silent and loving? Where can I find that? Does it exist in Oprah? It Show it to me. I want to see her. A humble woman. Which one is silent and loving in, in, out, out here in Chicago? Huh? Which one? Huh? You say you? Say, you, say you? Okay, sister, say me. All praises. All praises. Well, guess what, sister? When you get married, you need to make sure you keep that spirit on you. That's because hard. what our sisters like to do is be that way until they get married. You understand? And then they teach their children disrespect. Right. They teach their children how to be hateful. You understand? We don't want that. We got enough of that in our community, yes? All right, read it again. Come on. Verse 14. A silent and a loving woman is a gift of the Lord. So, Tamika, you say you're ready to be married, right? You prepare, or you, now you want to prepare yourself. All praises for repentance. You understand? All praise to the most high. We, go, we want to get you right for marriage. You understand? So you can be a help. So you can be of value for that man. Right? And this is a key feature. You said some more reading again from the top. Verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the law. It's a gift from God. Do you want to be a gift from God? Do you want to be a gift from God? How do you be a gift from God? You got to close your mouth. You understand? Especially when you're in the, 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 the presence of men. Especially when you're in the presence of men. There should be some honor and some respect there. Many of us didn't grow up with a father that taught us these things. Right? So naturally, you're not going to know. But guess what? You see all these purple shirts out here? We all teach the same thing. I, any one of these brothers can grab this microphone right now and teach you how to be a wife. You understand? Because we all believe in this Bible that taught us how to be husbands. That taught our woman how to be godly women. You understand? Come on. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Wait, what does the Bible say? And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. That means that she has to be taught by who? Who's the woman supposed to learn from when she get married? Who? She says Christ. You see, that's the mindset of many of our sisters, right? Only Christ can teach me. He gonna come down out the sky and, and, and show you what you're doing wrong? Is that what's gonna happen? So really what you're saying is nobody can correct me but me. That's what you're saying when you say that. You understand? So who's supposed to correct a woman? Her husband. What if she don't have a husband? Not all sisters are married. Her leadership. Very good. You see these men? These are leaders in this community right here. You understand? We got schools set up in Chicago where you could go learn from wise men that keep God's commandments. Was that it? All right. Back to Titus chapter 2. Very good. So silence, submission. What else did you say? Hope, no, I'm looking for four things because y'all want to get married. And so it's a few love, other things you need. Love, sex. sex, very good. This is the shark. Give me uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Bring it out. All right, she say, she say sex. All right, love. brothers want to have sex, right? Love. Right, but it has to be in order to that. Yeah. Sisters want to have sex, right? But it has to be order to that. You can't just be out here being a whore mongo whore. Every time Dick Harry, you understand? You can't do that. Read what you got. The book, of Levit the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. Yo. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. The Bible says to do what? To avoid fornication. To avoid fornication. Which fornication? Um, dressing up, covering yourself up. I want to know what that, what's the act of fornication. There's many different kinds of fornication. Make it plain for me so everybody can be edified. You understand? What's fornication? What's fornication, my sister? Sex outside of a marriage. Very good. Make it plain for me now. Give me some examples. Sex before wedlock. Sex before wedlock. Okay. What about uh, homosexuality? Is that fornication? Homosexuality. Is that fornication? Yes, it is. Right? What about bestiality, my sister? Is that fornication? Yes, it is. All right. Get, what, what about this one? Give me Leviticus chapter 18. Hold that. We're going to come right back. Bring it out. I think I want verse 20. Is that what I want? We're going to show you about fornication. All right? No, 20 and 18. I think that's it. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 18. What does that say? Read what you got. The book of Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 18. Listen to this, sister. Tamika, listen to this. 
I don't know if this going on out here, but if it is, you nasty, you better stop. You understand? Read you got. Verse 18. And if a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness. Doing what? Having her sickness. What's the sickness of a woman? Her minstrel. All right, read it again from the top. Verse 18. And if a man lie with a woman having her sickness. So if a man, some 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 brothers like to lay down, you understand, have sex with a woman, why they on their period? That's nasty according to the Bible. We more holy than that. That's right. Come on. And if a man lie with a woman having her sickness and shall uncover her nakedness, he have discovered her fountain. That means it won't no accident. He knew that she was on her period. She knew that she was on her period. You understand what I'm saying? And they still went to have sex. This could be two married people. You understand? That's nasty according to the Bible. Come on. And she hath uncovered the fountain of her blood, and both of them shall be cut off from among their people. Wait, what does the Bible say will happen? And both of them shall be cut off from among their people. Tamika, you want to be cut off from among your people? No, you don't, right? <laughs> So this is an example of how we have committed fornication. It wouldn't be written here if it's not happening in the black community. Everything we read about in this Bible is happening in the black community. Everything. You understand? So this is an example of fornication. Now give me the biggest 18 what you had. All right? Menage a trois. Y'all heard of that before? That's fornication. Right? A brother and a sister sexually dealing with each other. That's fornication. You understand? All those things are unlawful. How else would we know that if it wasn't written in this book right here? But we reject the Bible. We say, oh, this is the white man's book. Right? But where did the pornography industry come from? Where did it come from? It came from the white man. That's where it came from. Read you got. The book of Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 18. Neither shall they take a wife to her sister to vex her to uncover her nakedness. My brother right here, what's your name? Say it again. Kibaris, we out here teaching our people how to get the kingdom of God. You want to get the kingdom of God, my brother? How, how, how do you, you know how to do it? Not really. We need you to stand up, bro, manfully. You understand? Manfully and take back your community. You from here? You from out west. You live here now, though. All right, so while you're here, what do you have to do? Make a difference here. That's what you got to do. Give me Amos chapter 3. I'm going to show you what God says about you and your people. What's your nationality? Do you know? Look at this sign right here. Where you see yourself? Where you see yourself up there? American blacks. That's, what, that's, that's who you are. Read what you got. This is what God say about you and all the American blacks. Come on. The book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 1. Read it out. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you. Hear this word. The Bible that we're reading right now. Come on. That the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. That's what they, all of these are sons of Israel right here. All of those are sons. Of, Mike, Mike. Hey, can somebody fix this? Listen, all of those are sons of Israel right here. You understand? All those are sons of Israel. You say you come from what tribe? The tribe of Judah. Yes. You understand? This is what God says about the children of Israel. Bring it that includes the tribe of Judah. Come on. O children of Israel, against the whole family. Which I brought up from the land of Egypt, say. Come on. You only have I known. What does the Bible say? You only have I known. I thought the Lord was the God of everybody. God said he only know who? The children of Israel. That includes you so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. That's yes, right. Come on. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Right. Therefore, I will punish you. I will what? I will punish you. I will put. Oh, my God. I will punish you for all your iniquities. So the Bible says that he's going to punish us. Why? For our sins. What's sin according to the Bible? Tamika, what's sin according to the Bible? Sin. What is sin? This is the problem with our community. You understand? Sin. And we don't even know what it is. What's sin? Transgression of the law. You ever heard that before, my brother? We're going to read it for you out of the Bible. First John chapter th uh, 3. You know what I want? Sin is the problem with our community today. Right. All right? And because of it, we are killed in the streets. Right. Because of it, we kill each other in the streets. Right. Read what you got. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Yeah. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Whosoever does what? Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Whosoever commits sin transgresseth also what? 
the law. I'm going to show you a law. We were just dealing with the sisters on marriage. You understand? These sisters want to get married one day, but they want to make sure that they are of value when it's that time to be given away as a gift from the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to show you a law. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2. All right? Remember what we were talking about, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. This is law. All right? This is law. So when you get married, you shouldn't find yourself guilty of this. Read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 2. No. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. Y'all remember what fornication is, right? We spoke about some examples. Bestiality, my brother. I'm going to catch you up. Fornication. You understand? Woman with woman. Fornication. Man with man. Fornication. Menage a trois. Fornication. Your brother and your sister. Fornication. You understand? You and your mother-in-law, father-in-law, fornication. You understand what I'm saying? To avoid that, what does the Bible say? Come on. Let every man have his own wife. It says get married. To who? To who you think? A woman. To get married to who? A man. Why? So you can procreate. Can you do that as a homosexual? No, you can't. This Bible has wisdom behind it. This wisdom could be yours if you apply it. Come on. Let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Read. Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence. What does the Bible say? Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence. What does that mean, my brother? This is law. What does that mean? Let the husband render to the wife do benevolence. Say it again. Whatever they want to do. Like, make it, make it plain so we all know that you understand. I know you got it, but help me out with it. In a relationship, 50-50, mm, not so much. You understand? Because the man is the head of the woman. You understand? And Christ is the head of the man. And the Most High God is the head of Christ. That's so there's order within a relationship, right? But as it relates to sex, you understand? As it relates to sex, read verse 3 again. Verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence. You know what that means? Sometimes your, your wife will want to have sex. Can you tell her, mm, nah, I ain't really, nah, not right now. You understand? Can you say that to your wife? No, you can't, right? But do but do men say that to their girlfriend? Yes. Do they say it to the hoe? Do they say it to the to the uh, to the jump off down the street? Yes. God say, don't deal with your wife like that. You understand? This is law. This is law. Read it again. Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence. Come on. And likewise. And what? And likewise. You know that word likewise? You know what it means? The same way. All right. Come on. And likewise also the wife. Also, also the wife. Come on. Unto the husband. Unto the woman. Unto the husband. Unto the husband who she's married to. Come on. Verse 4. The wife hath not power over her own body. God say the wife don't have power over her, her, over her own body. So when a man want to have sex, what's the wife got to do? She got to have sex. You know, that's law. That's law. When a woman and a man is not operating in that spirit, what's that called? What's that called? When a man and a woman is not operating in the spirit, we just read, what is that called? Say it again. Fornication. Mm, I want to play an easier word. It's, it's three letters. It and it starts with an S. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Read you got. The book of 1 John chapter 3 and verse 4. Bring it out. A husband and a wife is not operating in the spirit of do benevolence for each other. And it's more than just sex. You understand? It's emotional support. It's, it's spiritual support. You understand? It's more than just sex. Right? God calls it what? Read it again for the top. Verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Does what? Transgresseth also the law. Come on. For sin for is. For what? For sin. For what? For sin. What's that called, my sister? It's called sin. Yes. It's called sin. Come on. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. You understand? We need the laws back in our community. Yes, That's right. All right. Our community has forsaken God's laws. Bring it up. Right? And therefore, what's, ha what, what's happened to us? What's happened to us? Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Bring I'm going to show you out. what the Bible says. We have forsaken God. We are in a God-forsaken community. All right? And as a result of that, what has our God done to us? Read what you got. Hosea chapter 5. All right? I want to start at verse 15. All right? You, you, you from here? Chicago? 
Vet, you go to the school? No, not yet? You got a flyer? All right, very good. Read what you got. The book of Hosea, chapter 5 and verse 15. Bring it out. I will go and return to my place. What does the Bible say? I will go this and... This is the Most High God speaking right here. Bring it you understand? Out. Through his prophets. Come on. I will go and return to my place. Come on. Till they acknowledge their offense. Till they what? Till they acknowledge their offense. When are we going to acknowledge our offenses? When are we going to acknowledge and say, you know what? It's my fault that my baby daddy left. When are we going to start saying that? Huh? When the brother's going to be like, you know what? I shouldn't even dealt with her like that. That's my fault. I got to fix that. I got to man up. I got to I gotta be responsible for my own actions. Bring I got to be accountable for my own actions. When are we going to start doing that? Right. Come on. Verse 15. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense. We got to acknowledge all of our offenses. You understand? And it's not enough just to admit it. We got to make change so we don't repeat it. Come on. And seek my face. And do what? And seek my face. We got to seek God's face. Yes, right. How we going to seek his face if we don't know what he look like? How we going to seek his face if we don't know what he look like? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 29. Look it out. All right? I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Today, yes, sir, yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 29, all right? We're going to wrap up soon. So make sure that you get you a flyer if you don't already have one. It's a number on the back. Call the number. Hit the extension. You understand? One of these men gonna pick up the phone and tell you your next steps. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33 and verse 29. Yeah. Happy are thou, O Israel. Come on. Who is like unto thee? Look, 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 look. Y'all should be happy right now. Right. Because all the prophets of God is out here teaching yeah. the truth. Y'all yeah. should be happy. Read it again. Happy are thou, O Israel. Are y'all happy? You happy today? You glad you came to the camp today? Did you learn today? Come on. Happy are thou, O Israel. Who is like unto thee? Who is like unto the Most High? Come on. Oh, people saved by the Lord. We the ones that salvation is for. Right. We the one Christ came for. Right. You understand? Salvation is for us. Right. We. The suit of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellence? You know, we're supposed to be God's battle axe. You know, we're supposed to be out here tearing down the nations with the word of God. You know what that starts with? You learning what your nationality is. You learning you ain't black no more. That's what that means. You're not Hispanic. You're not a spick. You understand? You're not Puerto Rican. You're not Dominican. That's not your nationality. God calls you an Israelite. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. And finally, my brother, be strong in the